You can say Moses. You can say Confucius. You can say Buddha. You can say Muhammad. But the moment you say Jesus, that's when they lose their mind. Don't say that name. Why? What's the problem? Because they know at the mention of that name, their knees are bowed. Their tongues are confessing that Jesus Lord. The demons inside of people cringe. And that's why they, they talk to their little, their little, uh, their minions. They'll talk to, to your boss, uh, your presidents, your, 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 your people in the earth. And they'll tell you, don't let them say that name. It's wrong. They can't say that name. You can say every other name. See, because the powers of the darkness, they know if, if, if you mention that name, I lose all my power. So right now, while you're sitting there, standing there, get up, walk around and say, Jesus is Lord. I always tell people, no matter what happens in your life, you get hit by a car, shot in your head, drugged up with COVID-19, you speak to any situation, if it has a name, you say, Jesus is Lord, and that situation has to bow its knee. Because God says, I have put power on that name. Hallelujah. So you see, this delegated authority is now straight authority because it's the Holy Ghost in you. And that's why we yield to him. That's why so many churches, you know, they, they can allow sin. They, they can change doctrines to suit men because the Holy Ghost is not running that church. And now I'm going to start to close. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, he said, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season, season. reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. See? If your church is not rebuking you when you're in sin, if they're not reproving you when you're walking in darkness, if they're not exhorting you to win the lost at all costs, Holy Ghost might not be there. You might have created that church to make it more comfortable for your sinful lifestyle. And he said, and they, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Watch this, verse 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. It's okay, it's beautiful. Thank God for, for church workers helping, building up the, the, the believer. But you have a ministry of evangelism. You have the right and the responsibility to evangelize, to be prepared to witness. I release that delegation upon you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the Holy Ghost who's been trying to convict you, get you, get you to a, a place of surrender. In verse 6, Paul said this, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. The apostle Paul said, I'm, I'm ready to die. I got to go. I am leaving. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Many of you haven't even begun to fight. Many of you haven't even gotten on course. Many of you don't even know you're supposed to use faith. Today is your day. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Then he goes in to say this. Henceforth, there is laid up for me 
a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not only to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I am working for my crown. Because in the book of Revelation, I have to give my crown to him. And I don't believe everybody's going to have that honor. If you don't have a crown to lay at his feet, you won't have that honor in heaven. You'll just be watching. I want my crown. Tell somebody, I want my crown. So labor. Paul said, I finished my course. I worked hard. I preached. I gave. I sacrificed. Now there's a crown laid up for me so that so I can show my appreciation when I get home. I can, I can take it off my head and lay it at my master's feet. I appreciate God. I thank you for letting me serve you. Paul knew. He knew he had to go home. He knew that Jesus saved him. Jesus gave everything for him. Paul was on his way to hell like every one of us. But the Holy Ghost so gripped his life that he was willing to give everything for God. The Apostle Paul said, I worked harder than them all. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was working with me. I'm pleading with you today. Get filled with the Holy Ghost so that you will have no shame at his coming. Going up in the rapture is going to be beautiful. But when you have no crown to lay at his feet, oh, what shame that will be. So let's close. John chapter 4. Jesus with the woman from Samaria. The disciples came, they saw Jesus talking to this woman, and in verse 27 of John 4, and it came and came upon and upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What speakest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? I want to just kill this devil right now. This Samaritan woman was talked to by the Lord. Mary, Mary, Martha, all these women were talked to by the Lord. It was these men and their ancestors are in the earth today in these churches forbidding women to speak. The ancestors, these pharisaic ancestors. Now these disciples wasn't even uh, religious, but in their culture they had an issue with women. And their ancestors are still in the earth. These churches that forbid women to preach. Here is Jesus talking to this Samaritan woman. And look what this Samaritan woman does. This, this woman, verse 28, left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? That woman left her water. She went to get water, forgot all about it, because she met the Christ. When you get filled with Christ in you, the hope of glory, people are going to leave their natural appetite seeking him. Anybody hear him? Here we go. Verse 29. Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and they came unto him. This woman evangelized. She went and got her whole city filled with men to come here, a real man. So don't tell me my wife can't preach, my daughter can't preach, my sister can't preach. I am under the uh, uh, authority of the Holy Ghost and so are they. Their gender does not hinder them. There's neither male nor female in Christ. That's your ancestral issue. Your cultural Pharisees trying to put that on believers. 
In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him or asked him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, as any man brought him ought to eat, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Jesus like this. He said, listen, fellas, while you were away trying to get some food and some water, I was preaching. I was testifying to this woman and I got so full. I don't need food. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. I'm satisfied once I'm doing the will of God. That's why some of you are filled with flesh. You're not filled with the spirit. You're eating too much, sleeping too much. Because you're not going to ever be satisfied with meat. Jesus told that woman, I'm going to give you water that you'll never have to thirst again. She dropped her water pot. She forgot all about the water because she got filled with the master. And that's why some of you just eat and, and enjoy your lives and enjoy the weather and enjoy the day. And you have nothing in your account if you was to die and stand in front of God to, to give, a, a, give an account so you can be rewarded. So he said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Right? And then this is what he says. Verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white, or ready to harvest. And he that reapeth, receiveth wages. See, you have to understand something. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to prepare you. You're going to be rewarded or have shame. I'd rather you be rewarded than have shame for not doing anything. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labor, and you are entered into their labors. See, it's very important that we understand, you know, um, we, we're going to look at it a little bit. Jesus said, in this earth, there's seed sown by Satan, he called them tares, and there's seed sown by God, he calls them wheat. He said, uh, they, the disciples said, shall we go and separate the wheat from the taste? He said, no, that's not your job. He said, that's the angel's job. Let them grow up together. And at the end of the world, the angels will do the separation. That's when that's that the rapture. So you don't know because somebody might be a tear today and a wheat tomorrow. But if you tear them up, hallelujah, instead of building them up, you destroy that tear forever. It's up to God to change a person. In verse 39, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of the woman, which testified, see, the woman testified, and people believe. If you don't testify, no one will believe. He told them all, he, he, you know, when she told them all I ever did. So when the Samaritans would come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believe because of his own word. They believe because of her word and his word. Listen to me. People will believe if you speak. Verse 42, and they said unto the woman, now we believe. Not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. We don't represent our church when we preach. We preach Jesus the Christ. 
Hallelujah. I think I just got two more places and then we're going to close. Jesus gave a parable in Matthew 22, verse 2. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain man which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the, mat, the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all, as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. See, don't pick who's God picking. So many people are rejecting him. Let them reject. If they want to stay in sin, let them stay in sin. Find someone else that doesn't want to stay in sin. Go to them. Like I read earlier, he that is unjust, let them be unjust. But he that is holy, let them be holy. God knows who to send you to. Verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king then said the king to the servant, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. You, you can't sneak into the family of God. In order for God to save you or to rescue you, it's with conditions. You have to give up your sinful life. You don't just hang around Christians. You don't just go to church listening to good sermons and thinking you're in the wedding. You're one of these guys in the wedding or at the wedding not properly dressed whom the Lord's going to say, bind them and cast them out. You can't just listen to the words of God and not repent of your sins and receive the Holy Ghost and expect to get into heaven without doing that. Those are the conditions of salvation. You believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead and you confess it with your mouth, then are you saved. Not by going to a church where they give relative messages and babysit your kids and give you coffee. You must repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. And so you got so many people in churches not filled with the Holy Ghost. Paul said it like this, if you do not have the spirit of Christ, you're none of his. Fight! Get the Holy Ghost. And now let's close. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. And now I want to close here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 3, verse 6. Because there are a lot of churches. Some of you go to these churches. Uh, they're denominational churches. And they have doctrines that are more powerful to them than the word of God. They're man-made doctrines how they believe the scriptures guide their destiny. And they're going to suffer loss. If you go to those churches, you're going to suffer loss. You're going to get, you're, you know, what are you saying? Catholics, Baptists, Charismatics, 
Pentecostals, Lutheran, Calvinist, Methodist, the people will be saved. They'll get into heaven. But by fire, you're going to suffer loss because your doctrine did not allow you to be an evangelist. Your doctrine did not allow you to go with the power of the Holy Ghost to lay hands on the sick that they may recover. Your doctrine did not allow you to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Sure, you sit in your church and you send money to missions. Your money, it will have a reward on your money, but not you. Come on. God expects you to have labor, not just your money. You should give an account. There's a reward for giving money. But when you stand in front of God, Jesus said like this, many are going to come saying, have we not done this in your name? Prophesy? Cast out devils? Heal the sick? He said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Your relationship with God will cause you to witness for him. No one would let somebody kill their own parent. No one would let somebody kill their child. No one would let somebody kill their sibling. But when you get the Holy Ghost, you recognize, that's my father, my God. I will stand for him. All right, let's keep going. Verse 8. How many here? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that water, but God that gives an increase. I am nothing, but the God in me, he's everything. Now he that planteth and he that waters are one. And every man shall receive, I hope you're looking at this, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Every man shall receive his reward. Anybody here? Every man shall receive his own reward. I'll do it one more time. He that planted and he that watered are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. If you do nothing, there is no reward. Hear me out. I'm pleading with you today. I'm pleading with you. Get up. Get the Holy Ghost. Work while it is day. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Paul talking. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Hallelujah. Y'all can hear me out there? If you can hear me, just wave in the spirit. Because I believe God really is wanting to speak to you. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Here we go. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall come shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it was Dappy. hallelujah it's going to show every man's work of what it's made of by the fire it endures <laughs> If it does not endure the fire, look at it says, verse 14, if any man's work abide 
which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. See, my pleading with you today was that God is allowing people to get it right with him when it comes time to labor and reward. You have been given the power, you have been given the authority and the power. God has given you both authority and power because he knows the value of a soul is worth a reward. The value of a soul is worth a reward. We're not laboring as a merit to get into heaven. Heaven is already ours. We're laboring to get others into heaven. Hallelujah. So first, I want to pray for you. Come on, stand to your feet. If you've been sitting for a long time, come on, stand to your feet. I've been standing the whole time. I'll wait for you. I believe the Holy Ghost, he wants to visit you. Come on, some of you got your hands lifted already. That's good. Ask for forgiveness. Even now, I rebuke you, Satan, you lying spirit. The devil just told somebody out there, it's not you. Oh, it's you. Some of you are so comfortable in your life, you don't even know. You don't even know that it's the devil. You're too comfortable in your life. The church of Laodicea, they had enough money. They were comfortable. If they were to compare themselves with others, they could actually say, I am not like that person. And Jesus says to this rich Christian, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth because you're lukewarm. I sense a lot of you are lukewarm out there. Lift your hands. Begin to ask God to forgive you. Begin to ask him to forgive you. Come on. We need to spend time with the forgiveness right now. I believe many people have gotten lazy. You're in the house, but you're lazy. You're not filled with the Holy Ghost. You have opportunity. You're so comfortable. You, you do whatever you want. You don't have to answer to anybody, but you have to answer to God. You're not going to die today, but if you was to die and give an account, what crown, what size crown would you have on your head? So for the next couple of next couple of moments, let's just wave our hands toward God. And, and if you need to be forgiven, get forgiven. sense those of you that, that are cleansed now and those of you that did not need to repent, I sense the Holy Ghost. Woo! Here he comes. Come on. Just give a wave offering. Say, say, say this, say, say, dear God, I represent my body as a living sacrifice. Fill me again. Make me a witness. Cause me to preach your gospel. Honor it with signs following. Confirm the word that I preach. So right now, let's pray for your co-workers. Come on. Let's pray for your boss. Come on. Your aunt, your uncle, your mother, your father, your parents, your neighbors. 
Everybody, begin to intercede. Mention names. Lift up names right now. Come on, open your mouth. Jesus says, when you pray, say, open your mouth. Let their names come out of your mouth. Whoever you need to be saved, lift their names up right now. The presence of the Lord is right. Come on. Stop resisting the Holy Ghost. Speak the word out of your mouth. The Bible says he even sent his word and healed them. He put authority on his word and healed them. Say, I send the word of salvation to my boss, to my angry co-workers. I send the word of salvation to my father, to my mother. I send the word of salvation to, to the Jewish people, Islamic people, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists. Send the word. Send the word of salvation now in the name of Jesus. Send the word. I see a young lady. She's going like this and she's saying, I receive. I see a, a young boy. He is also saying, I receive. Older people are getting up and they're saying, I receive. I'm not going to mention those of you that are still sitting there. But those that are receiving, receive. 